But uh, yes, the NCAA investigating Nebraska's use of coaches, assistants, and analysts regarding um, use of facilities and breaking COVID guidelines. And uh, Trev Alberts, as you let me know, and I, I had already seen it, but I didn't realize that uh, that it was scheduled for longer in regards to his statement to the media the other day in terms of uh, where we stand. Well, I, it, it's funny because I joked with you earlier that this this news always breaks on Wednesday after we've already got our show finished on, on Tuesday nights. So we're always behind the eight ball here, uh, <laughs> it seems like. Uh, because just last Tuesday, one week ago, Trev Alberts had spoke at the Nebraska or the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce and had touched on a bunch of, uh, of topics and stuff, and everything was great. But then uh, all of a sudden the news broke on uh, Wednesday morning um, about the NCAA investigation, which obviously in, any of this went on before Trev Alberts' tenure here. That, that was one of the first questions asked to him. Um, but yeah, so last Wednesday morning, uh, you know, post practice, you know, Coach Frost is not scheduled to speak on Wednesdays, and he wasn't scheduled to speak until yesterday at the uh, Monday press conference. But uh, you know, when that news hit, you knew he had to come out and say something because they couldn't let that fester all weekend long. And um, Trev Alberts walked him out there, and um, it was a little bit awkward <laughs> to be in the room. It was a little bit awkward, I would have to say. Um, I kind of, uh, to me, it looked like, uh, like coach Frost was, uh, had been brought out, you know, had been sitting in the, in the vice principal's office, uh, waiting for the principal to come in and walk him out in front of the student body and apologize for something. And it, it like I said, it was kind of an awkward feeling and, um, any of these allegations, uh, investigation that, that it's not going to amount to anything because every power five team has, analysts so-called analysts on their staff and it's not fair to the other conferences um it basically equates to to an extra coaching staff and and you got some pretty high profile guys on that staff um and they might have uh you know the allegations are that they outstep their bounds because they're not legally allowed to do any on-field coaching um so but um you know these guys are they're paid anywhere from sixty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. So there's, you know, there, there's some dudes on there that, that have valuable input to to the team, and uh, and then with the the facilities use, I mean, it was during COVID. It was a shutdown, and um, you know, they 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 had a gym that they had guys go to and held some workouts and stuff like that. So. Nothing, nothing serious here at all. You know, any kind of penalty is going to result in a, a, the most losing, you know, an hour or two of practice a week. Um, so, yeah, it, it was all very minor. It's all, I think it's a lot of hearsay going back and forth. Uh, Bill Moose uh, was the one that started the, all this. We don't know for sure, but that's kind of the word on the street. Um so, yeah, it just started something very strange around here right when you're getting ready to, to go into game week, and, and it kind of, uh, you know, took the headlines off of uh, your football team preparing to play a, a conference game uh, week zero of, of the college football season. So it was just very strange timing, and um, like I said, it's not a big deal to the program. Um you know, Bill Moose had signed off on anything that went on during that time anyway. So take that the way you want it. <laughs> well, in terms of these stories breaking on Wednesday, yes, it seems like I thought the same thing, that it seems like every time there's a big commit or there's any kind of news, it happens like Wednesday morning right after we do our show. And and with this situation, Greg, I almost tried to flag you down. Then I thought, oh, he's got enough going on. I'm not going to bother him. We'll talk about it next Tuesday. Um, the only thing I'll put on this that's uh, a little bit different than uh, any kind of possible violations normally, and I said the same thing about Arizona State, is regardless of what you think of COVID, don't want to go through the path of bringing everybody into this discussion about how severe it is and all those things, regardless of what you think of COVID, obviously there have been guidelines put in place for the safety of the student athletes, the coaches, everybody involved. Um, 
that is different than in a normal situation pre-COVID just to say you're gaining competitive advantage by, in Arizona State's case, well, they were recruiting during the dead period, uh, allegedly. And with Nebraska using facilities and then getting the on-field coaching from the analysts that are not supposed to be doing that, but also the, the use of the facilities during COVID and again, when apparently everybody else is not using their facilities uh, and then the safety of the student athletes and everybody involved because of the reason the guidelines are in place is for protection of everyone involved. And things are getting worse too. Lincoln just passed the, the mask mandate just went back into effect here in Lincoln today. Uh, it actually will start Thursday that, Everybody, if you've been vaccinated or not, are required to wear a mask indoors in any situation. So, yeah, things are, you know, not trending in a good way right now as far as COVID is concerned. Not in most places. Not in most places. Nope. 